Hello everyone, I am Narc Survivor. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Normally I talk about narcissists. In this video, I'm going to be talking about avoidant personality disorder. So if that sounds good to you, please give it a thumbs up down below. Hit subscribe and click on notifications to be notified when I upload a new video. And you can book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session by going to my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk. This happens when you stop chasing an avoidance. Avoidant personality disorder is characterized by social discomfort and avoidance of interpersonal contact. People with this disorder avoid intimate and social contact with others. They may be extremely shy, fearful, and overly concerned with looking foolish. Roughly 30% of people show avoidant attachment patterns while 2.1 to 2.6% of the population may have avoidant personality disorder. Avoidants want intimacy very badly, but they don't know how to handle it. As a result of how their primary caregivers behave towards meeting their needs as a child. Avoidants experience difficulty with emotional intimacy, a strong desire for independence, and difficulty trusting others. So they avoid getting too close to someone else, and instead, they learn to depend on themselves. But maybe they secretly want you to chase them. And maybe that's why they give you mixed signals. So let's talk about what usually happens when you stop chasing an avoidant. Avoidants need space to reduce the intensity of contact. They may say that they want you, but then they may also push you away, which can leave you confused about what they really want. But if you want to have a happy and healthy relationship with an avoidant, you must stop chasing them. Avoidants have a very positive view of themselves and a negative view of everyone else. They avoid intimacy or conflict because they fear losing themselves. But not all avoidants will be consciously aware of this Avoidance need more space than any other attachment style because it makes them feel more independent and safe. They are very protective of their space and in that space they are able to relax and be themselves. But when they are around other people, they're not fully aware of their surroundings. They're unable to be conscious of that moment and instead they may experience the noise of internal dialogue. In their childhood, they can only find comfort and relief from their anxiety by being alone. So they are used to being by themselves, even when they're upset. They don't know how to get relief or comfort without getting space from someone, which makes it especially difficult for those who have an anxious attachment style. Because if you have an anxious attachment style, you are on the other end of the spectrum. So you may have a fear of abandonment and you may find meaning from closeness. But when an avoidant withdraws from you, you must pull away because then they may end up coming back to you as a result of your shared ideas and feelings and by giving them space. But do avoidants want you to chase them? The truth is that avoidants do actually want to be loved and by seeking love, they typically end up with someone with an anxious attachment style, but then they feel suffocated because the anxious person won't give them any space. So then they want to leave. And when they do leave, they're happy that they left until they eventually begin to feel lonely again. And then they wonder why they can never find the right person for them. And the cycle starts all over again. Avoidance are not good with emotional intimacy. They are uncomfortable with closeness and connection because they don't feel safe or secure with other people. But that doesn't mean they don't want it. They do want it. It's just that they're their own worst enemy when they allow someone close to them. They cause most of the problems and the bad things that happen to them because of their attachment style. They cause problems for themselves by acting contrary to their own interest. So in essence, they self-sabotage. They do or say things that prevent them from succeeding 
will make things worse for them. But beneath it all, they want to let someone close to them. They're just afraid of being hurt. So they do want you to chase them. They want you to actively pursue and initiate contact with them. And to put in most of the effort to keep the relationship going. They want you to put them first before anything and anyone. They want you to cheer them up and make them smile. Even though they might ignore you. They want you to keep running and chasing after them. Even though you might feel like nothing is working. They want you to keep chasing and putting in as much effort as you can. But they only want you to do it on their terms. They want you to do it under conditions that they decide. Because then they will feel like they're in a position of control. But they won't ever miss you until they feel like there's no chance of reuniting with you. Because that's when they will feel safe enough to miss you. Since by that point... They will have their own independence and then they can live with that sentimental longing and wishful affection for the past where they once experienced happy personal associations. In this stage, avoidance may even do the chasing, but when you're dealing with an avoidance, they will always give you mixed signals. Their words and actions will never match up. They may express interest in you with their words but their actions will say something entirely different. Because although they may want to let people close and experience love, they don't want to let people close enough to where they could end up getting hurt. Which is why there are certain thresholds where you may notice them distancing themselves. Such as when they're asked out on a date, talking about moving in together, talking about marriage, or having a child together. Because these incidents require new levels of commitment or intimacy, which makes it more likely for them to avoid. Because they feel like they're losing their independence, which may cause them a lot of distress. So they may even become angry or dismissive. And you may try to find solutions to the problem, but it will just end up pushing them further away. And when that happens, it is best to give them space. Let them feel the way they want to feel. Let them reconsider their decisions. Let them change their opinions. Because if you pressure an avoidant, it will make them uncomfortable. And then they will feel like they want to leave. But as long as there isn't commitment, they won't have too many fears. Because then there's no pressure. And they're just getting to know someone. So it's only once an attachment has formed that their fears begin to surface as a result of their associations with attachment and connection in childhood. Because in their childhood, they may have associated attachment and connection with chaos, drama, neglect, criticism, and shame. So these are the fears that will arise once they begin to attach to someone. And it's difficult for them to process these fears, especially when they're being chased. So it's very helpful to give them space so that they can process what they're feeling and experiencing. That doesn't mean that you just have to put up with a relationship that isn't fulfilling to you. You need to know your needs. It can't just be a relationship where there's no connection, no commitment and no presence. You need to understand what your needs are and you need to communicate them. But then give space so that the avoidant can come and meet your needs. When you are dealing with an avoidant, it's more effective to speak of your needs in a positive sense rather than negative, such as asking them to do something instead of saying that they never do a certain thing. Because avoidants tend to be hypersensitive to criticism. So give them space, stop chasing them, allow there to be, to, to be room for their feelings to grow Identify what your needs are and communicate them, but give them space for those needs to be met. And then you can decide if it's building momentum in a way that is helpful for you. And if it's not, then maybe it's not the right relationship for you. But either way, you have to stop chasing.
to where you're left feeling confused and having to fawn or people please. You need to identify what you are looking for and then take action so that you can achieve that. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate to paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.